guys all right so even though this tutorial is aimed at beginners it also assumes that you have some basic knowledge of substance painter because you'll see that I already have an object that's been prepared so I'm going to assume that you guys have done the exact same thing you've got your object prepared and you're ready and good to go uh, for the texturing process right so let's move on okay so this is actually gonna be really simple to do this is actually aimed at beginners uh, so advanced users you're probably not going to be learning too much from this tutorial but anyway to stamp logos onto a garment or anything for that matter maybe you've designed a weapon and you want to stamp on some danger uh, icons or decals it's really simple to do we'll just be playing around with the add layer and the add fill layer and uh, whichever one you choose to use actually matters because they have their own properties that will be applied to the logo once it's stamped on okay so we'll be doing that in the tutorial and without further ado let's get started okay so I've gone ahead and Google Jurassic Park logo something really important to keep in mind whatever logo you plan on using you need to be able to remove the background so that the logo is just on its own so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna go and copy this image go to my Photoshop file new and just click on OK and edit and paste now I'm gonna go ahead to the magic wand select the black background delete it and if I hide this background layer you'll see that this is an indication that the background is transparent and this logo is on its own now something really important I need to show you guys already prepared a folder here with some logos some really well-known brands but you'll notice that every single one of these files is in a square format so if I drag this into Photoshop go to image image size this is at 2k resolution but you'll notice that the width and the height is the exact same value and this is really important because having your logo in a perfectly square format means that the logo is not going to distort or warp and whatever you see here is exactly how it's going to be applied onto your garment whatever you're applying it onto so I'm gonna go back to the Jurassic Park logo and let's just drag and drop it onto my 2k a resolution file over here just scale this up okay and then I can go ahead and hide the background now we're gonna be saving our two files right for this purpose we're gonna do a logo that's already got all of the colors on it and then you can see over here I've got just a standard flat color logo like this Adidas logo the Nike logo and I'm gonna be showing you the two uh, remember I mentioned we're gonna be doing the layer full layer uh, just a standard layer and a full layer and you'll see why I'm I'm using logos that have color on them and then why logos are just flat colors so we'll be doing this one first so I'm gonna go ahead file save as and I'll just save this to the desktop so I'll save this as a PNG file because I want this transparent background so I'll say Jurassic tutorial click on save and now for the next part we're going to be creating an alpha of this exact same logo so we want to make sure it's in the exact same location where it is now go ahead and choose the pattern tool and just draw a black background place it behind the logo select your logo go to layer layer style color overlay and we want to make this white so this is our alpha now whatever is black on this image is going to be erased so you can see over here this is basically our template for stamping on our logo or our patches onto our garment or weapon or whatever it is you guys are creating so I'm gonna go ahead and save this out so go to desktop and this one you want to save as a JPEG so I'll just say Jurassic tutorial alpha and now our files are prepared and we are good to go we can head back to substance painter okay guys something I didn't mention in the next part if you look on the right panel over here this is where size is located uh, because you'll see that I'm actually resizing my logo without mentioning it so I just thought I'll mention that quickly so just keep that in mind okay let's continue okay so let's do our first demonstration with the color the color logo so I'm gonna go to my folder where I've got my Jurassic Park logo that we've just saved out now we're gonna drag both of these in so I'm going to select both of them and drag and drop it you'll see I'm here on the project tab just drag and drop it into the workspace and this will pop up so I know this PNG is my texture file and the alpha is my alpha and I want to import this into the project and it's really important that you select project it's just a lot easier to find because then you can just go ahead and select this project folder and you can see it's listed over here 
Okay, so for the colorful logo, whenever you're using logos that already contain color information, you want to use a layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on add layer. And now here on the right, you can see we have a base color. So we just drag and drop this into base. And we have an alpha. Go ahead and drag and drop that into alpha. And there we go. It's going to show our logo. And you can see it's been perfectly cut out. So if I go ahead and stamp that on, it's now stamped onto the garment. Okay. Now something to keep in mind whenever you use add layer, and this is the only, wouldn't really say it's much of a limitation because you can still adjust these sliders. You just can't see it in real time. If you use a full layer, you'll be able to see the changes you are making. If maybe you're adjusting the roughness or the height, you'll be able to see that in real time. But when you're using a layer, just a regular layer like this, um, you'll have to stamp and if that doesn't look correct, you'll have to undo that, maybe adjust your roughness and stamp it back on to see how it looks with those values. So just keep that in mind. And another thing over here that you can adjust, if you come here to, if you come down to alignment, there's different options here. So you can see tangent wrap is basically projecting the image onto this garment and it's wrapping it around those folds. But if we change this to something else like camera, so this is applying the stamp according to wherever your camera is facing and it stamps it on there. Now you can see this can sometimes cause some weird stretching like that and I tend to not really use the camera option. I either go for tangent wrap or UV. Now UV is really cool so that's stamping it according to however your garment's been unwrapped and this is probably the most uh, accurate a representation of stamping something onto a, a garment or an object. It's now you're stamping it according to those UVs. Okay. Okay, so we've covered the process for adding a layer. Now we're going to cover the process for adding a full layer. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add a full layer. It's going to make your entire garment, your object white. It's perfectly fine. And uh, using full layers really comes in handy for logos that are basically fa flat colors like the, the Adidas logo, Nike logo. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually just drag in my alpha over here. So drag that into the workspace, select alpha, import it into the project, click on import, click on project, and there's my Nike logo. So there's nothing we can really see being applied onto our garment right now. That's because we need to add another option on top of the full layer. So right click on this, click on black mask, it's going to hide everything. And that's perfect. So whatever we stamp on now is going to be the logo. And here on the right you can see alpha. So I'm going to just drag and drop the Nike alpha in there. And I can simply just go ahead and stamp this on our garment. Now the awesome thing about using a full layer means that we can control the settings of this logo in real time. So I can change the color of the logo. I can adjust the roughness in real time. And I can even adjust the height. So adding some height onto our logo uh, it's going to do exactly what it says, add some height, it gives it some depth, and it makes it look really nice as well. So that's the differences be between the two. You just have a little bit of a limitation when using a logo that already has color on it. And the limitation being that you can't see the changes in real time, and you obviously can't adjust the color that's already been applied to a logo that has color on it. So just keep that in mind, guys. If you want more flexibility, you can use these flat shaded logos and that's how you do it so I can click back on the black mask and if you wanted to you could put Nike logos wherever you wanted to on your object just by simply stamping them like this okay okay so that's it you guys know when to use the full layer and when to use the add full layer and it really is that simple so you guys can have some fun go ahead and stamp these logos onto your garments or whatever object it is you're creating and another website that really comes in handy for me is called Etsy if I'm looking for really cool patches that I maybe want to put on some clothing I'll just come on here type in patches uh, find something and just remove the background and create an alpha from it as well and then stamp that in substance painter okay so anyway guys thanks for watching this tutorial and feel free to go ahead and follow me on Instagram. That's at MrDavids2. If you guys have any questions, you can ask me directly here on YouTube as well. And as always, thank you for watching my tutorials. Stay tuned for some more tutorials and goodbye.